Hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, I'll be breaking down and analyzing the outcome of the disappearing saviors from episodes 902 and 903 of The Walking Dead, along with why I believe that there was a better option for what ended up happening. Major warning of spoilers for everything in the show up to episode 904, and let's jump right into this. So as of the end of episode 903, we found out that it was Oceanside who was kidnapping and murdering the saviors that had previously terrorized and destroyed their old community by killing all of their loved ones in front of them but with the Order of Simon. I recently recapped that murder mystery from episodes 902 and 903, so feel free to check that out as well if you want a more detailed discussion involving the entire situation, but in this video, I wanted to talk about the outcome and what the Oceanside did and how Maggie and Daryl turned a cold shoulder to it. So when Maggie and Daryl first walked up to the Oceanside women ready to execute Arat, even though they said that Arat was the final person they were going to murder for it to be over once and for all, Maggie made the solid point that it wouldn't be over afterwards for everyone else, as the saviors would quit cooperating with everyone and continue the drama between each other as they forever wonder who the murderers were, never truly being able to trust the other communities again. Now since Maggie and Daryl didn't convince the Oceanside women to spare a rod and they didn't decide to give them up either, they just walked away and they kept the murders a secret with the Oceanside. We see the ramifications of this at the end of episode 903 as all the saviors leave the camp uh, because they don't want to build the bridge anymore, so they completely quit the bridge project with Rick and walk off and we see that Rick is worried about the bridge in episode 904. Now when Maggie tried to make her point to the Oceanside, she originally did consider talking Cindy out of killing Arat until she heard the full story and it got personal. Maggie knew what the right thing to do was and she knew it was wrong for the Oceanside to be murdering saviors like that. She never intended to inspire others to fulfill their revenge with murder, she obviously just didn't realize that she would have been such a role model when she decided to disobey Rick's ideals by hanging Gregory at the end of the season 9 premiere. Maggie did that for a personal issue, she said that she didn't want that to become the standard but it happened anyways. Daryl and Maggie knew that allowing a rot to be murdered was technically wrong, but they both had their own reasons to want to give a bad savior a death sentence. Daryl has his own reasons due to being tormented and terrorized as a prisoner, to the point that he snapped and wanted to straight up murder and clear every single savior Morgan style. Maggie also has a vengeance against them due to Glenn obviously, but she also ends up relating to Cindy's story of revenge as it hits home with her in regards to Glenn as well. Maggie compares Cindy getting revenge against a rot for her 11 year old brother and mother to uh, Maggie herself getting revenge against Negan for Glenn. Now during the season 8 finale, Rick made the decision on his own to spare Negan's life, not giving Maggie a say in the matter. Although Rick may have been making the morally correct decision to set an example for everyone else to create peace, Jesus is correct in the way that Rick was wrong to make a decision all on his own that wasn't his to make. Rick prevented Maggie from getting the satisfaction and gratification of being able to decide Negan's fate for herself, so she didn't want to stop Sydney and steal her opportunity for revenge like how Rick had previously stopped hers. Not only that, but Arat admitting that she said no exceptions to Sydney right when she killed her brother was icing on the cake for Maggie because that's exactly what Negan said right before killing Glenn. Now a ton of saviors idolized Negan, they tried to act exactly like him to impress him along with the fact that they always said that they're all Negan as an intimidation tactic, meaning that they they should all act like Negan as well. So although Arat most likely only said no exceptions and followed the rules because she knew it was something Negan often said, it still was a horrible thing to do and it definitely hit too close to home with Maggie especially because of the whole Glenn thing and along with Daryl because he's the one who punched Negan in the face causing him to say no exceptions and kill Glenn. Since Daryl felt so horrible about this, he felt so guilty to the point that he felt like he didn't even deserve Maggie's forgiveness, there was that whole scene about it. So during this Oceanside Arat situation, Daryl was obviously completely down to take Maggie's lead here and give Arat the cold shoulder. Although Arat probably did deserve to die for what she's done, every life does matter and she should have been imprisoned for what she's done in the past and not murdered. Yes, it's up for debate on whether you believe in the death sentence or not, along with death row and all of that, but regardless, Arat still deserved a fair trial, not just a bloody execution. The reason why I think Arat 
should have lived is because she legitimately wanted to become a productive member of society again. Yes, she was begging for her life, probably saying anything she could to live, but earlier in the episode when she didn't know her life was at risk, she stopped the saviors from causing more violence when they were threatening Daryl. Both Savior Arat and Laura want to become productive members of society again, so why not give them a chance of rehabilitation? So, how should they have properly handled this situation, along with any other similar issues that may arise in the future? Well, if Cindy truly does feel like Arat should be held accountable because she totally should, then fine, throw her in jail at the hilltop, right, alongside Earl, and then decide how long she should be in there, depending on what she's done, along with any other punishment, community service, I don't know, but do the same for any other saviors who have had pre-existing offenses either during or before the war. Now, since Arat did do something awful in the past, she should be held accountable for it now that the war is over. And when you think about it, it doesn't really make sense that all the saviors who have done wrong in the past just kind of got set free alongside the rest of the civilians while only Negan was imprisoned. It makes total sense that the communities that were previously terrorized by the saviors wouldn't feel comfortable just living alongside them as equals now after the war without the saviors having to face any repercussions. Yes, the saviors surrendered at the end of the war, but the ones that did horrible shit should still be held accountable for it. Now that they have the luxury of being able to throw someone in jail and spare them food every day, it's definitely worth to do so. Rick believed in all the communities being treated as equals, but he doesn't seem to understand the point that Daryl is trying to make, which is that the victims of the saviors wouldn't feel okay with living alongside them as if nothing had ever happened. They're just not ready for it yet. It's understanding that there would be everlasting grudges between them for what they did, both during and before the war, and they should have to pay the price for that. Most of the people living at the sanctuary were just civilians and workers, they're completely fine, it's just the actual savior grunts and lieutenants that should have to pay for their crimes against humanity. What they should have done was round up all the saviors and allow any civilians to accuse them of their atrocities. Innocent until proven guilty though, so throw the saviors like a rot that have done wrong in jail, decide different imprisonment punishments depending on the different crimes. Make maybe random but fair juries and set up a court in the town hall of Alexandria or something, create jobs where there are judges, lawyers, prosecutors to fairly argue each perspective and give everyone a fair shot. I know this isn't Better Call Saul, but hey, they have the luxury to do this now, right? Maybe some saviors only did bad things because they were forced to by Negan, maybe they would have gotten in trouble with Negan otherwise, or maybe they did just want to make a good impression with him. I'm not trying to sympathize or play the devil's advocate with the saviors because they are assholes, I hate them, they should be held accountable, I've said that, but it's worth hearing out their defense along with hearing out the victim side of things along with any witnesses that may know anything about the crime. If someone like Sydney has an issue with someone like Arat for what they did, take them to court, as funny as that sounds in a post-apocalyptic situation, and decide what their punishment should be if necessary, which for Arat it obviously is. In Arat's case, she definitely deserves some sort of punishment in order to give uh, Cindy some peace of mind uh, and just the Oceanside group in general, but Arat genuinely seems to want to have a shot at being an equal civilian again. As I said before, just like Savior Laura, Arat didn't want things to go too far because they didn't want violence, they didn't want to make a negative impression on themselves, they just didn't want to make themselves look bad in general. And that little bit of initiative shows me that some saviors that were previously assholes can eventually come around to the way of living that Rick Grimes has envisioned, it's just that some of them need time to fully transition over into an equal way of living. If an asshole savior genuinely wants to change and become a productive member of society again, I say give him a chance. Look at Alden for example. Maybe they should stay in prison for a long time if they have done something wrong to eventually be let out with community service and probation, but they should be given a chance to be rehabilitated. Back in earlier seasons, our main characters didn't have the luxury to lock up prisoners and have the spare housing and resources to feed and imprison multiple criminals, but now that this is finally a possibility in the new beginning, they should take advantage of it. The question of whether or not to kill a prisoner or let them go has been a huge moral question in the show since season 2 with Randall, as Dale tried very hard to get the group to reconsider killing him just because they were afraid to let him go in case he came back and attacked with his goon friends. It was at the beginning of the apocalypse, they didn't have a proper jail to keep prisoners in, let alone the resources to give extra food to a prisoner every day. Even in seasons 3 and 4 when they had the prison with literal jail cells to lock people up in, they were barely set up comfortably, and even when they finally were, it didn't last long enough for that to become a serious question of debate. After all the time that Rick spent on the road, he 
developed the bad habit of becoming jury, judge, and executioner all on his own, but now that he has a huge network of communities, he could possibly start in motion a plan like Michonne wants to set up a legitimate government of law, a judge, jury, and executioner themselves. Now, the idea of sentencing someone to death and executing them does go against what example Rick is trying to show by sparing Negan's life, but maybe he should be open to compromise. By sparing Negan's life, he's motivating everyone else to keep the peace, and we know this to be true, so Rick did have a good point to keep Negan alive. It actually worked successfully because it caused people like Cindy to control their urges for revenge. That is until Maggie decided to murder Gregory, inspiring them that there was another option, along with motivating them to take matters into their own hands. Maggie killing Gregory inspired them in such a way where they didn't even think that murdering and executing was a viable option under Rick's command until Maggie showed them that it was. Rick's way worked until Maggie messed it all up, hate to say. Maggie executing Gregory was very situational, she didn't mean to make an example out of him as I said earlier, and even if they did allow there to be a death sentence for people like Gregory or Negan, it's not like they'd just randomly kill Negan out of nowhere, that'd make them no better than him. They'd hold a fair trial with tons of witnesses, loads of evidence piled up, it'd probably be a huge case that would take ages to sort out, most likely with all the other saviors getting sorted out before he ever did, but at least he's given a fair trial. Rick is sparing Negan's life not to only respect Carl's dying wishes, not to only prove to Negan that they can live a fair, fruitful life without him causing everyone to live in fear, but also to prove to everyone living in all the different communities that killing isn't necessary and that they can be productive and successful without it as they move into the future together. The thing is though, since they've been able to succeed so far in the new beginning, it's truly time to start creating a form of government and law system to handle sentencing prisoners like Grey Green, Negan, or even Earl from the Hilltop. I feel like this is the same thing that Michonne has been trying to say to Rick and Maggie during the beginning of Season 9, where she says that she wants to create something bigger than any one person making a decision. She finally got Maggie to agree along with her opening up to figure out how to handle Earl's punishment for what he did. We can talk about common laws, but I'm not giving up the right to do what I think's best for my people. And neither will we. But I do think what is best for everyone will wind up being what's best for Hilltop too. Maybe. I hope so. Michonne has been uncomfortable over the fact that they've kept Negan alive, along with the fact that Rick has decided Negan's fate all on his own, that his life would be spared but spent rotting behind bars until his final days. Since Michonne doesn't know if they truly made the right decision by keeping Negan alive, she feels like they should create a council to fairly discuss and come to a conclusion. Maggie understands Michonne's way of thinking and making decisions with a group of people instead of just one leader, but Maggie is looking out for her own community and we'll have to see how long this takes to be put into effect, especially if Rick and Maggie are leaving the show. Maybe once Maggie and Rick leave the show in episodes 905 and 906, after the second time skip, Michonne will have maybe successfully started up a government for Alexandria and the surrounding communities. But Gregory? He had chance after chance and he wasted them all. Maggie. I don't regret what I did, Michonne. Some people can be redeemed. But others can't. And who makes that decision? I guess that's one of the things we'll have to figure out. I'd love to see a bigger version of the council come back from season 4 at the prison, where maybe multiple representatives from each community can come together each week to have a meeting and update each other on any progress made along with any issues that need to be sorted out. In Earl's case, I feel like he should stay in prison, but that he should be given visitor hours along with community service so that he can do work as the blacksmith in order to fix the broken plow from the season 9 premiere. Also, circling back to what I said a moment ago, in Gregory's case, I believe that he would have been either sentenced to life in prison with community service or given the death sentence if they did make that an option just for the simple fact that Gregory has been given a million second chances he's wasted them all away as he's shown zero effort of rehabilitation at all he begs and pleads and whines that he's sorry but he's not he just begs for his life to save his own ass and then the second that he's not in trouble anymore he'll go right back to being the same piece of shit that he always was Gregory not only tried manipulating everyone he definitely manipulated Earl to try and murder Maggie, but he literally tried to murder Maggie himself as well afterwards. He couldn't even do that. What a failure. Along with saying to Maggie's face that he doesn't feel sorry for anything that he's done wrong in the past, and he doesn't care how many second chances he's been given because he's still alive and standing at the end of the day. Do you even give a crap about all of the stupid shit that you have done? 
after all the chances that you've been given? No, because I'm still here. Since he's still alive and breathing, he'll always revert back to the same old asshole. Gregory implies that he'll stay this way forever, as he shows no intentions on ever changing, implying that if he was ever given more second chances, he'd waste them away as well, never truly learning his lesson. In my opinion, good behavior should be taken extremely seriously, because if they show any ounce of wanting to become a productive member of society again, and I mean genuinely, then that's definitely worth giving them a chance, because every life matters now, they want to have a productive civilization, with increasing numbers. So what do you guys think about all this? Do you think it makes sense to keep prisoners alive now that they have the luxury to, opposed to just killing them off like the earlier seasons? I mean, that's why Maggie had Earl build those jail cells, right? Or do you just agree with Oceanside? Although giving someone a fair trial and punishment is way more humane and moral than murdering them, I've seen a lot of people support the death of a rod, and I feel it might just because they're so used to wanting bad guys to get killed off, along with the fact that people have become jaded to it, or maybe they're just younger viewers who don't really care or get the whole concept of not killing criminals. I mean, that's why superheroes like Spider-Man try to not kill criminals, right? Back when I was watching this show, The Walking Dead, in high school when it first aired, I didn't really care about any of that, I just wanted to see the bad guys simply get killed off, but as I've grown up, I've obviously begun appreciating just how much this show questions the humanity and morale of these characters. For example, back when I first saw the Randall episode in Season 2, what I was talking about earlier, I didn't really care about the debate of how important it was to choose if he lived or not, I was just kind of pissed off that Dale died at the end of the episode because of Carl. Although Dale was one of my favorite characters, I was just kind of going along for the ride, not really thinking too much into it. But now that I've rewatched the episode so many times, I really do sympathize with Dale's pleas to the group along with the ironic fact that although the entire episode Dale was trying to prevent someone from being executed, it was him who had to sadly be executed by Daryl at the end of the episode. It's things like this that make me appreciate the show more and more as I rewatch it again and again. Maybe one day people will feel the same about that towards season 9 and a rot. Now, with that being said, Arat has obviously done horrific things compared to Randall from Season 2, but I hope I was able to get my point across. Leave any thoughts or opinions down below, but that's pretty much it for the video, guys. I'd appreciate a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything I've said today, as it really helps me out more than you can imagine. Feel free to subscribe for more Walking Dead content in the near future, and if you'd like to take that extra step in helping support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon as well. Also, follow me on Twitter too, link to both of those in the description. I'm fairly active on Twitter even when I'm not posting videos, and I'm always retweeting everything I can involving the Walking Dead universe. But anyways guys, as always, I thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out!